Hello, uh, we in this particular discussion, we will talk about prime numbers and a particular method of using them to solve equations. Take for example, this problem, x square minus y square equals to 31. Uh, suppose it's given that x is an integer and y is an integer. So x and y are whole numbers. We want to find out what whole numbers x and y will fit into this equation. So if I replace x by a number, a whole number, and y by another whole number, will they fit into this equation? Not every number does. For example, if you replace x by 10 and y by 2, this will not work. x by 10, you get 100 square, uh, 10 square, that's 100, minus 2 square. So that's 100 minus 4, that's 98. So clearly 98 and 31 are not same, so they don't satisfy this equation. We want to find out numbers which do satisfy this equation. And to solve it, we will use a very uh, curious method. We will use the fact that 31 is a prime number. So let me write that. Uh, notice that 31 is a prime number. So there are no factors of 31. 31 has only two numbers dividing itself, one and 31. That's the definition of a prime number, right? A prime number is a number which is divisible by itself and one. So in this case, x square minus y square equal to 31 and 31 is a prime number. So we will be able to use that fact very efficiently. Let's see how. So x square minus y square can be factorized. So let's do that. Uh, x square minus y square equal to 31. This implies x plus y times x minus y equal to 31. Now x plus y into x minus y is 31, which means that both of these numbers, x plus y and x minus y, are factors of 31. This is a critical part to understand. They multiply to give 31. So they must be itself, each of them must be factors or divisors of 31. Now, 31 has only two divisors. 1 and 31. That's the good thing about prime numbers. There are only two divisors in this case, 1 and 31. Now, one of these factors will be 1 and one of the, the, other, and the other one will be 31. Now see, x minus y is a smaller number. And x plus y is a larger number. Of course, we are assuming that both of them are positive whole numbers. Only then this will happen. So if there are smaller numbers, x minus y is a smaller number, then we can set x minus y. Set x minus y equals to 1. The smaller one will be 1 and the larger one will be 31. So if you add these two equations, you will have 2x equals to 31 plus 1 is 32 because this negative y and positive y will cancel it, each other. So 2x will be equal to 32 or x is equal to 16. Now if we plug in x equal to 16 in the first equation, so let's plug in x equals to 16 in the plus first equation. So 6 minus y equals to 1 which means 16, I'm sorry, 16 minus y equals to 1. So 16 minus 1 is y, which means y is equal to 15. So we have solved the problem. We have found two numbers 
16 and 15 which will work that means if we replace x by 16 and if we replace y by 15 so 16 square minus 15 square which happens to be 256 minus 225 is exactly 31 and since there are no other factors of 31 there is this only one solution so uh, that's a positive solution whole number solution is a positive solution and now if we want the negative solutions as well we have to choose one of them as negative the other one as uh, positive or negative so we basically have four choices since we are squaring we can have four choices the four choices are these 16 times 16 comma 15 so x is 16 y is 15 x is negative 16 y is negative 15 since we are squaring it doesn't really matter um, negative 16 positive 15 and 16 negative 15 so there are really if we take all the whole numbers into consideration and there are these four solutions now if you are familiar with the coordinate geometry there is a very powerful implication of this uh, particular problem so what i'll do is i'll draw the picture of this equation so if you know coordinate geometry you know we can draw graphs of equations so let's do that all right, so let's draw the picture of x squared minus y squared equal to 31. So I'm using a software called GeoGebra to draw the picture of this. Uh, so that it will look like this, a hyperbola. So even if you do not know what is a hyperbola, it's fine. Uh, it, it, it looks like this. If you learn coordinate geometry later, you will learn about this structure. We can find the structure by cutting a cone in a specific manner. Now, the problem that we solved says a very deep result. It says that there are only four points on this entire hyperbola. So you can see there are millions and trillions and zillions of points on this hyperbola. Only four of those points are, will have um, integer coordinates. So they are called lattice points. So one of them is A, one of them is B, one of them is C and one of them is D. So see, I've written the coordinates of those points here. So only these four points, A, B, C, D, only these four points will have both coordinates as integers. And none other point on this hyperbola will have that uh, property that both the coordinates are, um, both the coordinates are uh, integers. So this is a very interesting uh, geometric interpretation of the algebraic problem that we just solved. Now let me quickly talk about the hyperbola that we just saw, uh, that we just found. And it is interesting that we can find the hyperbola using cutting um, the double cone. So if you see uh, a double cone like this, Let's use a double cone like this. So it's a double cone like this. It's a solid figure. And if you cut this double cone, if you cut this double cone vertically, uh, let's let me cut it like this. So if you cut this double cone with a with this cutter here, then you will see that we will have a hyperbola which looks like this. It's a very see, interesting construction. These are called conic sections. It's useful to try and imagine uh, how this will look like. And uh, you have to draw a little bit of diagrams in your paper. Try to imagine uh, what would happen if you cut the double cone with a cutter like this, like the way I've shown you. It will look like a hyperbola, the picture that we found earlier in the graph. So uh, that's it for today. Uh, thank you for watching.